morning. Good morning. This morning I want to begin from Ephesians chapter 5 and beginning in verse 25 through 27. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. <clears throat> so this morning, we want to consider how Christ gave himself so that he could cleanse and sanctify the church so that he could present it to himself, holy and unblameable. We have to remember that without Christ and all of these things, there is no salvation without him. Now there is one person working all of this, and it is Christ. He is the one who is qualified to do all of these works. It's, it's not a work that requires separate individuals to do the different parts, each specializing in their own certain field, because Christ specializes in everything that is necessary. <clears throat> the one who gave himself is the same one who cleanses, and it is he who will present it to himself and then he also will receive it. So he's on all of these ends. Christ is the one who knows the end of the work from the beginning. So he begins it, and he's the one that is suited to bring it to its completion. When somebody knows what they want to do, they can distribute the work to someone else, giving them instructions and asking them to do the work for them. However, the perspective of the instructor often oftentimes differs from the one who is doing the work. So sometimes the result will vary. It will be different than the one who had this vision of it in the beginning. So if someone wants to have something done the way they want it to be, it's beneficial for them to carry it out. And this is what we see in Christ. He is the one that brought these things from the beginning. And so he is the one that's going to carry them out to his desired completion. He himself will bring it to pass, knowing exactly how to fit his church for the mold, the, the place, the intention that he, has, um, he is preparing it for. He knows the end result and seeks his will to accomplish it. Now remember, Christ is the one who gave himself. This is what qualified him for the rest of the work. He is going to now prepare himself, a bride. In giving himself fully to the Father's will, he received all the resources necessary to complete the work. The Father invested in him everything that was needful because he gave himself. So then he was ready to do this work of sanctifying and preparing his church. Now this is the time of preparation. This is the time that we're in right now. He's preparing us for his bride. But there is coming a time of presentation. He is going to present it to himself a spotless and glorious church. Amen. Christ will present it to himself, rewarding himself with taking full possession and constant abode in the place that he's prepared for him. Now, the builder of the house normally doesn't live in the house until it's completed, until it's finished. It's not livable at a certain time. Other times, there are those who set a goal, and until it's accomplished, they don't partake of any of the fruits of it. We see the example of someone rewarding themselves after a task is well done, when it's completed and it's done. In a similar fashion, Christ will present himself a church when it is full and when it is complete. He will be able to make his constant abode there and then, at that point when the work is completely pure, when it's suitable for his dwelling. Now this presentation will be the seal of the finished work. When he presents himself, this glorious church, that is going to be the culmination of what he's worked up to this whole time. That will be the finished product. There is an anticipation on the part of Christ as he's preparing this. As he watches his church take on the form that he is working in it, that he desires for it to have, there's a great anticipation to receive it and to present it to himself. Christ cannot accept an unfinished or an unholy work. So the fact that he receives the church at this time of presentation attests to the fact that it has been made perfect, that it is whole, and it is complete in him. <clears throat> at the time Christ receives his church at this presentation, there will be nothing lacking, and every enhancement that he has given will be completed. It will be effective at that time. 
Now, this morning as we gather together, I wanted to remind us of all these things because Christ is here in the midst of us this morning. And he doesn't just attend as, a, as an onlooker or something who's, someone who's going to watch the happenings of the morning, but he is here building his church. He said, I will build my church. And this is part of this preparation at, for this pre- presentation of the church. So this morning, he's going to be building This is a time whenever he's going to be purifying and purging his people, washing and renewing us, nourishing and strengthening, fortifying and increasing, and even enlarging us today. So this is all part of this preparation so that we can be presented. He can present himself, this glorious church. So my exhortation for us all is let us join in this work because in the Revelation it does say the bride hath made herself ready. Also, we join right with Christ in this work of preparation so that this presentation, the day of presentation, will be glorious. So let us receive every advantage that he gives today and every resource available to ready ourselves for him. We're going to pray for Brother Bob before he comes for our class.